the steam going right here. That's where the steam accumulates. How about these domes? That one and that one. They're called sand domes. What's inside? Sand. The engineer can release that sand. It'll come down to this tube. It'll spray out on the track right in front of the wheel, giving it a little more traction. So when you're first starting up, if the uh, tracks are slippery for some reason, grasshoppers at one time, uh, or an emergency stop. You can buy a brand new diesel electric locomotive today, cost between a million and a half and two million dollars. Bells and whistles and computers and a sanding system just like this. It's not broken, doesn't need fixing, it's cheap. Engine 3 would be an exception. But you can take a look and have a pretty good idea of how fast it would go by how big the wheels are, the drivers. This rod, you can just get going back and forth so fast, tremendous inertia there, and there's no gears. So this locomotive has drivers that are 44 inches in diameter, and this locomotive would do 45 to 50 miles an hour. If you wanted your locomotive to do 90 miles an hour, 80 inch drivers, bigger wheels. Mm -hmm. And then of course, that's what you, what you had. You wouldn't try to apply that to a heavy freight train, you wouldn't have the leverage. And if you get a flat tire in your car, you have to change the tire, right? This is a wheel. That's a tire. And we have to change the tires. And I'll show you how we do that later in the tour. And uh, in years past, that would have been drained out here to a pond outside here. Our version of the Love Canal. We don't do that anymore. Uh, this has just filled up considerably in the past couple of weeks. There's going to have to be a truck come in here one of these days and suck this out of here and dispose of it properly. But uh, locomotives were, steam locomotives of this era were big polluters. There's uh, a lot of oil, a lot of oil drips off. The ties, of course, were wood with, with, a, with a preservative in them. So the railroads have come quite a ways in, in getting their act together. Follow me. The matching car. In 1902, the railroad had been here five years, and they'd been very successful. And they decided to put in a branch line from here to Angel's Camp. Angel's Camp is 16 miles north of here on Highway 49. And if you drive it, you'll look down at Maloney's Reservoir, which, of course, in 1902 wasn't there. So they had to go to the bottom of the canyon, cross the river, and up the other side. And it is a pretty steep and precipitous canyon. The way they did it was with switchbacks. The train would come down, go through a switch, out on a tail beyond the switch, stop, get out and throw that switch, go in reverse down to the next switch, do the same thing there, go forward down to the next switch. Two major switchbacks on each side. Well, no train could ever be longer than the shortest tail because you had to get past that switch before you could throw it. So they had cars five and six built for this Angels branch. They're small, they're short, they're half the length of a normal railroad car, and very utilitarian. They were built by the Holman Car Company, the same people that made the um, cable cars in San Francisco. So engine number 30 in cars five and six were the regular consist for the Angels branch. In the 1960s, the late 1960s, engine number three and cars five and six were the consist for the Petticoat Junction train. Do you remember that program, Petticoat Junction? It was filmed here. It was a very popular show. Green Acres, I think, is what they, what they called it. Anyway, um, a lot of movie making done here, and that was a major one. And cast iron isn't the best metal. It's brittle. It doesn't have good adhesion characteristics against the rail. It's not what you want meeting the rails. Rolled steel is what you want against the rails. So the tires are made out of rolled steel. To change a tire, the inside diameter of the wheel, or the inside diameter of the tire, is slightly smaller than the outside diameter of the wheel. So to get it on there, we put this ring of fire on the outside, attach a gas line, and light all the orifices, and heat this up, expand it just enough to slip it over the wheel, clamp it and balance it, and it's the uh, tightest bond you could ever have. There's not a single nut or bolt to ever rattle loose. Or of Yosemite National Park. When they started building the dams, they took the heavy stuff, the steel and concrete, they took up by steam locomotive. 
They wanted a little flexibility in getting uh, people moved around. So they had a small fleet of these rail cars built. They're built by the White Motor Company, the same people that make white trucks today. This particular one right here was also the ambulance. You see the stretcher sitting over mm -hmm. here? And then out here's the outside pegs where that stretcher, after it was unfolded, you'd be riding right along there. I'd rather walk. <laughs> it would be smooth, but that's about the only thing it'd be. It'd be scary to all get out. Uh, a couple of interesting features. It still has a, a steering wheel. It came off the production line with a steering wheel. They kept it on there. They made it useful. If you crank the steering wheel hard to the right, and you can hear things happening down here, you engage the front brakes. That's something you'd have to train yourself to do. <laughs> the other thing, it carries its own turntable with it. You put a jack under here, and one under the same spot on the other side, jack it up, and you can spin it around so that you're facing the right direction when you come back down. <laughs> well, let's go out this door right over here on that platform there and then spin it around so that you matched up with the set of tracks that would take you into your assigned stall. This turntable is air powered. You see the pipe that comes off the power pole there and then down on either side. We have house air at 90 pounds pressure. It does a variety of things, but that's the most important thing it does is turn the turntable. This turntable was installed in 1922. The one before it, the original turntable, was called an Armstrong model turntable. That is how you turned it. Get it? <laughs>